If your PC has an AIO in it, then you have a pump like this one, and it's in charge of circulating fluid throughout that closed system. If this fails, your CPU will overheat, or your GPU if one's attached to your graphics card, and that's no good, right? We want to keep temps in check, so it's important that these things run optimally. Now, there's been a lot of talk as of late about how to position your AIO, and I still see comments to this day saying that the way I'm doing things is incorrect because the barbs are too high, blah, blah, blah. We've already made a video responding to those comments, you know, attempting to explain why those comments are incorrect, and still, it doesn't seem to get across to some folks. So in this video, I'm going to try to simplify things a bit more, and we're also gonna talk about some exceptions to the general rule. Uh, I have three different AIOs here from three different manufacturers, and they all have pumps in different locations. Hence the title of this video, uh, you'll need to place these in different areas of your case to make sure that they don't uh, run hot and run with air through them, because that's how you kill them super fast. So uh, we'll try to explain all that in this video, kind of keep it condensed as well. I don't want to stretch it out into a 20 or 30 minute monologue. Stay with me. Meet NZXT's new and improved H1. It's a compact ITX chassis packed full of features. You'll find toolless panels and SSD trays, a PCI 4.0 compatible riser cable, an integrated 750 watt SFX gold power supply, and a 140 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. It's practically half a PC build. Just throw in your platform and graphics card. NZXT's addressed cooling concerns with its previous model as well by opening this new version up a bit more, providing more airflow for larger graphics cards. Perforations around the case are also larger, and a 92 millimeter exhaust fan has been included included for extra ventilation. If you're looking for something powerfully small and elegant, consider the new NZXT H1. Learn more by clicking the link below. So I wanna kick things off with a brief explanation of the issue at large here. What we're attempting to solve when we complain about AIO positioning. This is our PC case. This is the bottom of the case where our power supply would be, usually our basement. This is the top, this is the back. You'd have your exhaust fan somewhere up here and your front where you typically have some intake fans. We have our CPU. Now this is just a kind of a generic location. It depends on the motherboard, it depends on the size of the board. Uh, a lot of ITX boards have the socket you know, closer up to the top here in the corner. Uh, some boards have two sockets right next to each other, but uh, you know, for, for the sake of argument, let's just say it's somewhere right here, which is pretty standard for ATX boards. Now we have our radiator, and you'll notice that one side of this has a part sticking out. This is where our barbs are located, and from the barbs, you'll find our tubes, and the tubes run down to the block side, which sits atop the CPU socket. Now again, there are a number of ways to position this radiator, right? Depending on the case, you have different mounting points, could be up top, some cases even have mounting points at the bottom. Uh, you could, of course, mount it up front. You could also sometimes mount it at the rear if you have a smaller AI, like a 120 or a 140. Uh, and of course, this beckons the question, well, where should my barbs be in relation to the CPU socket, right? Because if you have, let's say, this case right here, where your radiator is completely below your socket, so are your barbs, and your pump is positioned in the block itself, right? this is not good. The reason why this isn't good is because you'll have a bunch of air that will passively rise. Sometimes it'll get pulled by the pump itself and get stuck in the chamber, uh, but that air will rise into the block and it will stay there. And if the pump is in the block, then that pump will continue circulating air. It will overheat, maybe overspool, and kill itself a lot faster than it should. That's no good for your CPU temperatures in the long run. A dead pump is a no bueno. So to be clear, in this case or in this case, regardless of bar positioning, if your radiator is below your pump in your closed system, if your pump is in the block and your block is positioned higher than your radiator, this is bad. It doesn't matter what you use to justify this unless your case is laying flat, which then you might be able to make an argument that this is okay. If your case is positioned upright, this being the base of the case and this being the top, this is not good because all that air will rise into the block where your pump is. Now, this positioning here is fine. And again, you'll hear a lot of folks say that this is not. I get a lot of folks in my comments saying that this positioning is incorrect. And the reason that they say it's incorrect is because despite the barbs being significantly higher than the pump in the block itself, these barbs can still pull air down because air collects up here, right? So the pump is pulling air because it has nothing else to pull. And yes, that would be the case if these loops weren't sufficiently filled. If you suspect that is the case, then I wouldn't advise doing this. And even if your pump will be fine in this situation, you'll still hear some noise, you'll still hear some gargling, and that might not ever go away. You can very easily fix this by flipping your radiator upside down. Now all of your air is trapped at the, uh, for lack of a better term, underside, of the radiator, and your pump is now pulling everything in from the barbs down below. 
right? Those bubbles rise, that makes sense. Bubbles rise in liquid and they'll stay up here and they won't be affected by what your pump is pulling in from the barbs below. Most of the time, however, these manufacturers adequately fill these AIOs, which means this layout is also okay and it is not a reason to attack somebody in the YouTube comment section. These pumps are relatively weak and you're also assuming when you make that claim that these AIOs are not filled properly. Usually again, there's some air left over, but not enough to the point where these barbs are completely exposed to it. There should be just a few small bubbles that collect over time. Again, they shouldn't harm anything in the long run in this config. Now, if you want to avoid this debacle altogether, you could mount your radiator up top. And this uh, actually has a few pros and cons. First off, obviously, if your pump is here, you don't have to worry about air collecting in your in your pump. It's just, it's not gonna happen. It's gonna settle in the radiator, which is where you'd prefer to have it, right? Uh, and of course, you could swing things either way. You could have your barbs positioned toward the rear of the case, or you could have your barbs positioned toward the front, uh, as long as the tubes obviously are long enough to reach the socket in this orientation. The only issue with this is that, depending on the setup of the fans, whether you're pulling air in or pushing it out, you could slightly raise CPU temperatures. A lot of folks like to exhaust air out the top of their case in this fashion, and what that does is introduce hotter air from the internals of your case into the radiator, which can, again, increase CPU temps in the long run. It shouldn't be too substantial, but you'll notice that if you flip those fans around and bring in fresh air from the top, your CPU temps will probably drop by a few degrees Celsius. Now, it's the same basic story for this rear positioning as it is for the front. Again, just imagine that this is cut off here, so it's more of a 120 or 140 mil representation. Uh, barbs up, again, much higher than the block. You shouldn't have an issue as long as your pump is in the block, and the same goes for this side. I will also note that if you front mount your radiator and you insist on running things barb side down, you might have an issue where your tubes are not long enough to reach your block. Uh, if it looks anything like this, I just had a person tweet this out and uh, you know you can see that his tubes are struggling to reach the socket. I would not advise this. Flip it over, please. But anyway, I hope that this, um, this little representation here helps better explain the issue at hand. Hopefully it clears it up if you have any concerns. And this all again assumes that the pump is in the block, which most Asetek pumps uh, will be positioned in the blocks here. And Asetek is the pump provider for many, many AIOs out there. But there are exceptions, and that's what I wanna to get to next. So this AIO here is from MSI. I believe it's a Core Liquid P240. Uh, so it has a 240 mil radiator attached. And at first glance, you would assume that the pump would be in the block, right? Like most Asetek AIOs. So it'd be in here. I have only two hands, so it kind of looks awkward. However, you'd be incorrect to assume that, and I've assumed this incorrectly before. When I first ran into these AIOs, I assumed it was in here, although I was a bit, I was weirded out because I didn't see any cables stemming from the block itself. And so I, was, I kept questioning, I was like, how is this pump getting power in here? There's no pump in here. It's actually in the radiator. It's actually behind this little square metal plate. And on the backside here, you can see where that pump is getting power from this cable that you'll run to your motherboard. Uh, so if we took this apart, you would find that that pump looks a lot like the one I showed you in the very beginning of this video. This positioning means that you've got to approach things a bit different. So now our entire approach to AIO positioning needs to change. Whereas before we were referencing socket positioning and bar positioning, now what we really want to avoid is top radiator mounting altogether because our pump is also up here. Now you could argue, yes, some air could get trapped on either side of the radiator. It shouldn't be as big a risk to the pump, but you still open up or introduce the possibility of air to get trapped in specifically the pump chamber, which can kill the pump long-term. Uh, I personally would recommend a front mount or a rear mount. Uh, this would also be okay, right? Positioning your rad at the base of the case. Uh, however, what this would do is force all of that air into the block. Uh, now there's no pump in this case, right? There's no pump here, but you still have your fin stack, which is responsible for increasing surface area and pulling heat as, as efficiently as possible away from the CPU. And if you have air trapped up here, that could still affect CPU temperature. So I don't recommend this, but I would say it's better to do this uh, in the case of the pump being in the radiator over this. I think this is the worst because this will probably kill your pump. Uh, whereas here and mounting at the rear are probably fine. And bar positioning doesn't really matter because the pump is not necessarily gonna be at the highest point in the rad or the lowest point in the rad. It'll be somewhere in the middle. So you'll always have space above it for that air to collect. Now the third kind of AIO design I've seen is manufactured by Be Quiet. This is their Peer Loop series and you can see their pump is actually in line with their barbs. It's actually positioned between the tubes. 
like in the tube run, this is their way of circumventing the Acer Tech patent, so I'm told. So that's cool, but it's, it's weird. And it does mean you need to approach this a bit differently than the other setups. So in this case, with your pump being more or less in line with where your barbs are, I do not recommend this layout at all. I don't recommend front mounting unless you can get your barbs at the bottom, because then your pump is significantly lower than not only the top of the radiator, but also the socket. Um, I would also not recommend doing it this way, where you rear mount it with barbs up, because your pump is still, more or less, the highest point in the loop. Instead, for these AIOs, I would recommend the top mount scenario, where you've got your barbs pointing down, regardless of where they're positioned front to back. You could do it either way. Your loop is still uh, gonna be intact long-term because your pump is kind of in the middle, right? So it's able to avoid the uh, collection of air bubbles long-term, and you're ensuring that there's not gonna be any choking or any loud kind of like sounds being made uh, because all of your air will trap itself somewhere up here in the radiator, which again is the best case scenario, I would say. Now you could make the argument for a bottom mounted radiator. However, that still kind of puts us in the same boat that we were in with the MSI AIO, where you have uh, most of your air being trapped in the block. So it, it doesn't really matter that the block is the highest point in the loop from a pump perspective. This is still okay for the pump, but you're still going to allow most of those air bubbles. And this will, this will matter the most if you have a ton of air in the system, which you shouldn't, but it, it I'm sure has happened before. Uh, when that air gets trapped up here, the uh, very, very dense fin stacks in here can't do their jobs. You don't get fluid circulating, that water doesn't absorb the heat, and your CPU runs a lot harder than it should as a result. So for a situation where your pump is in line with barb height, as is the case with the Be Quiet AIO, I recommend top AIO positioning. This is really the only way I'd be comfortable with it, unless you were able to somehow get barbs down with a front or rear mount. Now I have had a bit more time to reflect on this section of the video specifically. I was able to talk actually with Be Quiet in more or less an unofficial capacity about their pump location. It is so unique. It's likely the only one that you're gonna run into apart from maybe the MSI one. I know NCXT also makes a pump in rad M22, I think is what it's called. Uh, but this one from Be Quiet is super, super unique. And so I wanted to get their take on it. They told me that they're confident that a barb up front mount scenario is okay, despite the pump being as high as it is in that loop. Uh, and the reason why they're confident is because they actually include a fill port in all of their pure loop AIOs, and they include extra coolant in the box. So if you notice any strange churning, gurgling coming from the top of the radiator, just remove the closed system, pop open the fill port, and add some coolant. It is an extra step. And I'm afraid a lot of folks will overlook this. I think it's very cool that Be Quiet adds a fill port because most Asetek branded AIOs do not have fill ports. Uh, so that is a plus in my book for the Pure Loop series. However, it, it does require that extra, you know, bit of effort to mount barb up. And I personally am still a bit hesitant to recommend it. I think ideally barbs down with a front mount or any top mount set up for a Pure Loop AIO you will be golden. Now, I, I do also wanna say with respect to the entire video, my goal is not to fear monger. I'm not trying to tell you that if you mount a certain AIO incorrectly, that you will kill your pump. I can't guarantee that you will, of course. I also can't guarantee that your pump will die if you mount it correctly. However, I think your odds of something going wrong do increase if you mount certain AIOs improperly. And that's what I'm trying to convey here. I've seen a lot of videos talk specifically about the pump and block AIOs out there. Again, a lot of Asetek branded units, but I haven't seen them talk about, you know, like the NZXT M22 uh, that has the pump in the radiator or the uh, MSI P240 core liquid series that have the pump and radiator or the Be Quiet Pure Loop AIOs that have the pump in the tubes, right? I mean, th those are different uh, and they're obviously exceptions to the general rule. And that's why I titled this video what I did because I think it's a bit more comprehensive than those videos out there. Even more comprehensive than the previous video we uploaded on this very topic. So hopefully that sorts it out. Okay, back to the conclusion now. So uh, hopefully this clears up any concerns you still might have. My goal is for this to be a one shot. Just send your friends to this if they have any questions at all about how they should mount their AIO. I don't want there to be any confusion. I don't want there to be um, dissenting opinions. Most of the stuff isn't even opinionated. It's just factual. We can prove that certain layouts are more detrimental to pump life in the long term. In fact, I could very easily kill this pump, right? I know exactly how to do it. I know how to kill this one. I know how to kill this one. Um, so we can 
prove these things. We can, we can show that they're repeatable in the lab. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what to do and what not to do with certain AIOs because there are unique pump positionings out there. And it's just kind of like sort of exploded out of nowhere, just the, the, the ways that companies will try to go around the ASATEC patent um, results in some, I would say, downside. And a lot of it has to do with how you mount it, where you position that radiator with respect to the block, et cetera. Um, so, you know, just again, to give you a quick recap, this is the typical AIO with an ASATEC pump or well, uh, where an ASATEC pump usually is in the block. Uh, and so you don't wanna do this right here, right? Where your block is much higher than your radiator, the pump shouldn't be the highest point in the loop. In the case of the MSI Core Liquid P240, uh, you have your pump in the radiator. So what you don't wanna do in this case is position things like so, because now your pump is more or less the highest point in the loop. That's no good. And in the case of the Pure Loop from Be Quiet, what you don't wanna do is this right here, because even though your block is much lower than your barb height, your pump isn't in your block, so this doesn't matter. Your pump is actually in line with barb height. So this would be okay, though not recommended. Uh, this would be pretty darn good, right? Barbs below the block because now your pump is much lower. Uh, or you could even mount it from the top. And actually this is the way I would recommend you handle these because now your pump is kind of sort of in the middle of the loop. You don't have to worry about Eric being collected in the block either. So that's about it for this one. I don't have too much uh, else to say. I just, yeah, again, I want this to be a one-stop shop for, for folks who have questions. Uh, and if you have any other concerns, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this one, click the subscribe button. Consider giving a thumbs up to this one as well. That always helps. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.